Welcome to Strategy. Principles are stronger than principalities. Strategy is a program meant to teach you how to convert prophecies into realities and secrets of how these men you admire became great. Join Pastor Charles Osazua as he teaches you strategies on how to be successful. Pastor Charles Osazua is a president Rock of Ages Christian Assembly International Incorporated, an author and choice speaker in conferences across the world. Highly anointed and most sought after speaker, a mentor of CEO and endowed with uncommon wisdom, a generational gift to the body of Christ. Strategy, your pathway to success. Hello, I want to use this opportunity to appreciate all our viewers on television, on satellite, on social media. I want to say that your comments have been so encouraging, which is a proof that God sent us to do what we are doing. Now, this is very critical at this moment to note that some of the things we teach in strategy are facts, researched facts, verifiable facts. And I also believe that this particular subject of planning is going to help you. Now, last week, we we're talking about the power of planning. And I remembered I said to you clearly that the difference between struggling nation and developed nation is planning. Ladies and gentlemen, without a drawing that contains your program, you have not started life. Planning is very important as a family, important to your family, important to your organization, important to your personal life. Where there is no plan, there can be focus. Where there is no plan, there can be reasonable sustainable result i'd like to show you something in luke chapter 14 and verse 28 for which of you intending to build a tower seated not down first the key word here is seated not down first meaning planning is the ability to sit down take note of this is either you have a foundation or you do not have at all is either you have a foundation or you do not have at all. Don't assume. It's either you have a foundation or you do not have at all. Psalm 11 and verse 3. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundation of life, sir, is planning. The foundation of life is planning. Which of you intending to build a tower, meaning to achieve the building of a tower, which is a type of your vision, you need to sit down and plan. Planning is the ability to sit down. This discipline of sitting down and planning. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 10, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. One scripture that I love using on strategy. He said, verse 15 says, The labor of the foolish wearied them all, every one of them, because he know not how to go to the city. A man who has plan is laboring. A man without plan is also labor. What is the difference? One is focused labor. The other one is scattered labor. He said, for they know not how to go to the city. So now, how do I go to the city? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the power of planning. Planning reduces tension, takes away anxiety, helps you not to be stagnant, helps you manage frustration. Helps you evaluate where you are coming from, where you are, and the next step to take. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited today because I believe God that as you go back to the drawing board, especially now that the year is coming to an end, God Almighty will bring beauty out of ashes. Now, I was studying the book of Genesis and something came to my mind. The first thing God made was light. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Why on earth will God create light first and make man last? Just imagine if God created man first and made light last. That means today, your nose will probably be at your back. 
God knew for me to see properly, to have illumination, I need to make man first, light first. Man was his ultimate, but he needed to follow the drawing. He needed to follow the plan. There was a conscious plan. If you look at verse 4, and God saw the light, that it was good. If you look at verse 5, and God called light day, and the darkness he called night. And evening, the morning, were the first day. In verse 6, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst. These are programs that God was following. It was after structure had been put in place, plan was followed, then he now made man. Even when he made man, he put man in the garden with a responsibility, he said, dress and keep. So he gave man plan, dress the garden, responsibility, keep the garden, accountability. One is responsibility, the other one is accountability. Ladies and gentlemen, you see, I'm tired, really tired, coming to church. You are going to live in houses you did not build. Amen. Favor is upon your life. Amen. God is at work on your life. Amen. You are going to be blessed. You are head up, not tail. Amen. You are going to be the richest man in the world. Amen. As you leave today's service, you, you start picking money on the ground. Amen. Are these prophecies like? No. But if you end only a prophecy, you have just been fooled. You have been fooled. Because these things will not come to pass except you follow principles. Principles, like I've said in this program, is more potent than principalities. Which is, can only stop a man who has nowhere going. Look at creation story. God brought man last. And man was his ultimate. Man was the focus. But he made sure that structure was followed. Structure was properly followed. You know, we looked into the Ark of Noah the last time in Genesis 14. In Genesis 6 and verse 14. Genesis 6 and 14. Make the, make the an Ark of gopher wood. Only God knew the intensity of rain coming. And he already told Noah, this is the wood to use, planning. Meaning, I can't guarantee your safety, even if you are in the ark, if you don't use the recommended wood. Look at this. Rooms thou shalt make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without the pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. These are drawing. These are plan. Ladies and gentlemen, don't bother about what you did not achieve. Don't bother about what went wrong in 2017. Relax. Which of you intending to build a tower are not sitting down? It's time for evaluation. It's time to sit and think. It's time to look into the drawing. Where did I make a mistake? Where did I get it wrong? And begin to rework on your program. I believe 2018 is going to be a most prophetic year. One year that you will live to remember for a very, very long time. If you look at this Ark of Noah, you see that there was no guesswork. No wonder in Hebrews chapter 8, I think in verse 5, God told Moses, See that you build according to the pattern shown thee at the mountain. See that you build. I gave Noah a drawing now you i'm also giving you a drawing for the tabernacle make sure that you build according to the pattern given to you maybe next week we're going to look at the tabernacle of moses and see that there was also a plan and program for that tabernacle i'm tired of christians doing guesswork i'm tired of toe and fro movement i'm tired of aimless prayer and fasting without focus I'm tired of Christians with empty brains. I'm tired of Christians without capacity. I'm tired of Christians confessing, professing, claiming without reality, without practical, tangible proof of the confession. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a competitive world. The best will always emerge. Take note of this. For me, 
planning is like architectural drawing. There are different levels in architectural drawing. The first is the architectural drawing itself. The architect puts his drawing on paper. Do you know after the architect finishes drawing, he needs a structural engineer. There's another level called the structural drawing. What's the work of the structural engineer? To determine where the pillars that will be holding the building will be. And also take note of this. The more story building you want to achieve, the more tedious the job. The more the height of your building determines the volume of labor the engineers will put in. A man building a 50 story is not the same. You don't just go to the street and pick engineers. You have to get professional. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have a drawing that contains the vision of your life? Do you have a structural drawing that determines how far you will go, whether you collapse on the way? Do you have electrical drawing that determines the points, the lights, mechanical drawing? Ladies and gentlemen, I will advise you, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, that is what he will reap. You, it's time to stop blaming the witches in your village, to stop blaming the ones in the city. It's time to stop believing pastors telling you are cursed. It's time to be stop believing people telling you have an evil mark. That's why you have not succeeded. Whereas your brain is empty. You need to stop believing some of this religious superstitious belief that make men perpetually poor. You need to stop believing them. You need to sit down and plan and have a drawing. And that is the drawing you follow. I'm excited because as you listen to me week by week, God will give you the grace to sit down, look at your life and see that it's not the devil that puts you where you are. That you need a conscious plan. First of all, what is my gifting? What is my purpose? You plan according to your calling. You plan according to your vision. That is components of planning. You plan according to your vision. You plan according to your purpose. You plan according to your passion. I'm going to be back to continue this message. God bless you. For questions and comments, please email us at Your questions and submissions will be read and treated live on the program. Strategy, your pathway to success. Yes, like I said before, planning is like a building. There, if you see an emergency building, you will know. If you see a well-planned building, you will know. You need architectural drawing, you need structural drawing, you need electrical drawing, you need mechanical drawing. Then the last one is the finishing. You need to know how the building will look on finishing. Sometimes when good architects work for you, they show you the building before they put it on ground, which is a function of planning. Psalm 11 verse 3, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? I can guarantee you, sir, without a conscious, deliberate plan, if you stumble into money, you will lose it. If you go up without growing up, you will come down. Growing up connotes process, connote planning. I'd like to show you something in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, write down the vision. Document the vision. Make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Document the vision. Most of the things I'm doing today as a pastor, as the president of Rock of Ages Christian Assembly International, this ministry has about nine mandates that God has given to us. Now the next phase of our church is the education mandate. Where have we not done it since? We are, we are planning. Now we are researching to find out what they are doing in Paris. We are researching to know what schools are doing in the US. We are researching to know what schools are doing in the United Kingdom. We are interacting with 
a whole lot of groups and organizations in education across the nations of the world so that by the time our school they hit up international school begins it's not going to be school as usual we want to raise people that will not just be students but when you interact with them you know these ones have been processed the next phase of this ministry is the education mandate and we know and we are working plans are on ground to make sure that this mandate is actualized how did we get there it's in the plan why are we doing it it's in the plan why are we putting on putting in this much energy it's in the plan there everything i will do as a pastor until i'm old if jesus tarries is in the book everything all my assignment everything i will do is already documented the media department the tv raka television is in the paper we have all this is in the plan the hilltop microfinance bank commencing next year 2018 is in the plan plans are already going on these things are in the plan it's not sudden where is the drawing of 2018 have you started have you started gathering materials putting materials together for 2018 have you started please it's time to start get materials find out from people who have done what you are trying to do hebrews 6 12 be not slothful followers of them who through faith and patience had obtained the promise i like you to get serious with life and leave the devil alone stop fighting demons and witches I'm an apostle by God's grace. I'm a territorial prophet. But I've also realized that beyond the fasting, beyond the prayer, beyond the sowing of seed, you need to take responsibility for your own life. Psalm 119 verse 109. He said, my soul is continually in my hand. That's where the church is lacking. What are the dangers if I don't have a plan how will my life be if I do not have a plan what are the likely dangers number one waste of time waste of time a man without plan wakes up not knowing where to go what to do how to do them and the most valuable ingredient that God gave man which is time you can't add to it you can't subtract from it it's been mismanaged. There are relationships you are today, ladies and gentlemen, you need to quit them. There are a lot of things that you are involved in that you need to quit right now. How can a church service begin by 6 and close by 11? You say because the power of God is moving. You start a service by 5, by 10 o'clock, 11 you are still keeping people. They are not in the spirit. It's just that they couldn't leave. The next day you are not going to find them. The crowd will keep reducing. My revered mentor, Bishop David Oedipo said, he had to understudy Catholic Church and know why Pope come and go. Catholic Church remained the same. And he got some findings. One of the findings he got was time management. Catholic church managed time more than any church you can find in the world. You know when the mass is starting and when the mass is ending. He, he was able to make discoveries. Because Catholic church is the oldest church on earth. He needs to find out why the Catholic church is still standing strong. And that is where the mandate came from. He put them on paper, plan. So when you do not have a plan, the first thing that happens to you, time is mismanaged. Number two, waste of resources. No matter how much comes into your hand, without a plan, resources are mismanaged. Time is wasted. Scarce resources also wasted. Scarce resources also what? Wasted. Resources are wasted. They are not properly channeled. I can tell you today, whatever God has given to this ministry has been properly managed to the glory of God. So this is very critical. Number three, lack of focus. 
in Job chapter 1, 6 and 7, Satan from west coming down. He said from toe and fro. A man with that plan has no focus. He can wake up today and decide to do anything he wants to do. His energy, emotions, skill, they are not harnessed. They are not compressed towards a direction. So a man with that plan lacks focus. Have you ever seen people who are inconsistent? Today they will tell you they are footballers. Tomorrow they are basketballers. Tomorrow they are tennis players. The next day they are into timber. The next day they are into pure water. Why is it so? It's lack of focus. And that is because there's no drawing to follow. Number four, frustration. When a man has no plan and has mismanaged time, also mismanaged resources, also lacks focus, the end product is frustration. You see a man frustrated, wake up around 2 a.m. in the night with calculator. How did I spend the money? When he's supposed to be sleeping and resting. He said, okay, I gave somebody 5,000 on the road. I gave another person 2,500 on the road. I gave another person 13,000 on the road. He will calculate and calculate. Because I've been issued, there was no program. If there was program to follow, you wake up one o'clock and be carrying paper, calculating, how did I spend this money? I, I bought Bole, uh, uh, 15 Naira. Then, okay, I gave somebody 10,000. You are confused because there was no planning. There was no drawing, frustration. Then number five, one of the dangers of lack of planning is stagnancy. Lack of planning can keep you on the same spot without knowing everybody will be moving your colleagues your contemporaries your friends will be moving you are stagnant at the end of the year you only climb the altar to say today's my birthday i've added one year that's all, that's all your testimony you are stagnant lack of planning makes you stagnant number six guess work you don't have accuracy <laughs> no accuracy things just happen anyhow anyhow Number seven, wrong company. Can I tell you the truth? The prodigal son didn't crash because asking the father to give him the inheritance that belonged to him was wrong. No. There's nothing wrong with the man. But the only problem I have with the prodigal son, there was no drawing. There was no plan to follow. Have you ever thought about this? Anytime we preach about the prodigal son, we only look at him from the context of wastage. He wasted his father's resources. What if he came back richer than the father? Have you ever thought about this before? If the prodigal son came back and said, Dad, you gave me 10 million, but I've multiplied the money, and this is what I have done. The father will be happy altogether. Also, you remember that Jesus gave talent to one. He gave five talent to another two talent, another one talent. The first two multiplied their gift because there was already a business plan. There was a program. Andrew, Janet, Joy, wherever you are watching me on television, Christopher, Emeka, Adesua, wherever you are watching me on this screen today, Abiodu, whatever your name is, I'd like you to note that you cannot continue like this. Osai Bovo, you can't continue like this. Whatever your name is, sit down, ask yourself deliberate question. Do I really have a plan? I conclude by saying this. Your vision is the stage, like an altar. The plan is the stair that takes you on top of the stage. You can't jump on top of the stage. You need stair to take you there. So why the stage is your ultimate, where you are going, you need stair. And that stair is what I call planning. Which of you intending to build a tower without first of all sitting down to cast the course? So planning is the ability to sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, too many things asking for your attention. It takes discipline to sit down. It takes discipline to sit down and plan. I can tell you today, 
where we are in rock of ages is not a surprise from day one those who know me i've been saying we are going to supply road i've been talking about glory land i've been talking about different departments and mandates that god has given to us so gradually they have been unfold they are unfolding in layers in stages in phases the next time i will see you on television please have a drawing architectural drawing of your life structural drawing of your life electrical drawing of your life mechanical drawing of your life and the finishing of your purpose and you will now see that by this time 2018 you will look for the devil you can't find him the devil only function in an environment that has chaos in an environment that is not in order god bless you don't ever forget this if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do if you have not given your life to christ what is the purpose of having wealth on earth and go to hell say after me lord jesus i accept you into my life I believe you came, you died, God raised you on the third day to save my life. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Father, for saving me in Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. I want to see you in church on Tuesday, 4.30, tomorrow, 4.30, communion service at the City of David and all Rock of Ages branches close to you. Then on Sunday, 6.30 and 8 o'clock, I will be there to receive you. Pastor Charles Osazwa is my name, President Rock of Ages Christian Assembly, International Incorporated. God bless you. To get a copy of this teaching, books and messages by Pastor Charles Osazua and other ministries materials, please visit Raka Resource Center, Kilometer 10 Sapla Road, inside Rock of Ages Compound, Obe Benensity, or visit www.rakai.org or call 070-3356-4665. Thanks for watching.